reasonable summary. This is how it was phrased in 1963 by Edgar Gordon, who was a physiologist at the University of Wisconsin. It's still true today. It may be stated categorically that the storage of fat and therefore the production and maintenance of obesity cannot take place unless glucose is being metabolized. <laughs> Since glucose cannot be used by most tissues without the presence of insulin, it also may be stated categorically that obesity is impossible in the absence of adequate tissue concentrations of insulin. Thus, an abundant supply of carbohydrate food exerts a powerful influence in directing the stream of glucose metabolism into lipogenesis whereas a relatively low carbohydrate intake tends to minimize the storage of fat. I'm running late. <laughs> I should leave the room open. This is as good a conclusion as I could make. I could show you some clinical data from low-fat diets, I mean low-fat versus low-carb diets, to show that when you tell people to give up carbohydrates, uh, they lose more weight than when you tell them to give up calories. The point I want to make, though, is not that this is whether or not this is about diets. The point is that we have misconceived obesity and overweight in this country for a century, half a century. That we keep saying it's about energy balance, about calories in, about exercise. We've got, if you have an obese child, you're going to put him on a low fat, low calorie diet and try him to get him to exercise. And what's making him fat is the carbohydrates in the diet. The same way cigarettes give you lung cancer, if you care about the physiology, if you care about the biochemistry, then what makes people fat are the carbohydrates in the diet, not the total amount of calories and not how sedentary they are. In fact, these children are sedentary because their fat tissue is taking up a disproportionate amount of the calories they consume. Every one of those populations I talked about, let me skip ahead, boom. Those populations we talked about in the first, this is how it was perceived in the early 70s before all the science was swept under the rug. You know, why are these populations fat? Why are poor populations fat and extremely poor populations fat? Ralph Richards said this, most third world countries have a high carbohydrate intake as their economic dependence is predominantly agricultural with a heavy dependence on non-dairy produces. It is conceivable that the ready availability of starch and preference to animal protein contributing as it must the main caloric requirements of these populations leads to increased lipogenesis in the development of obesity. If you think of an obesity as a sort of excess fat accumulation instead of energy balance, and you look at what regulates fat accumulation, you can explain the data. And I'm in this horrible position as I was trying to convince people like you that this is important, that if you want to prevent obesity and diabetes and the chronic diseases that associate with it, you have to get the cause of obesity correct. You cannot have an entire nation and your public health authorities saying it's caused by eating too much because it's not. So that's why I'm here. I hope it's compelling. I'm not trying to convince you that it's true. I'm trying to convince you it should be taken seriously. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions. <laughs>